but but through that through that journey, they could actually discover something about the reality yeah. of, uh, and meaning of art, and then begin to form a free relationship, a truly free, mature relationship with it. And, and it would it would have to be a guided journey because yeah. it would almost be like teaching a child in first grade to do form drawing. You really have to begin from zero and slowly, slowly move along with them. There are some Waldorf high schools that are allowing students to do videos as electives, but what they basically do is hand them a video camera and say, do a five minute video. You can see some of these on YouTube as well. And they're, they're stupid. I mean, basically, there's nothing behind them except a lot of jagged handheld movement. No ego is there. And that's the important thing, I think, that it's fine for the teachers astral and etheric to be present when we teach first graders drawing and painting, but there really has to be an ego or even a bit of spirit self. Much higher faculties have to be present in the teacher to be able to take the child on this very dangerous and fairly, uh, you know, terra incognita world of the media. And, and we have to, as a movement, get together and have you know conferences in which teachers describe their experiences to each other that it not just sort of be done on the sly and we ignore that it's there but rather face it in a very uh, fair and square way. Ron. Uh, then, you mentioned about the the world is there for for children to love because it's the world they entered. They created. I mean, I often wonder, I sense sometimes with some people, some teachers, almost like a phobic reaction to anything having to do with technology. So if a phone, cell phone goes off in, in a, uh, in a, in a some, even before an event takes place in the Waldo School, some people will come at you like you were, you know, committing a crime. Uh, and, and I wonder if the teacher doesn't love the world that is, uh, it really is afraid of it, or is or is uh, against it. That communicates to the child and is not necessarily helpful. I mean, the child should pick up that the teacher loves the world as well. Is what I'm trying to suggest. Isn't that? Am I right in that? Yeah, that's. I would say that's right. I think it used to be uh, sufficient that high school teachers were like that. That we felt then the kids were really awake and they needed to see people who were doing research in the world and, you know, maybe active in some scientific project or going to university in the summer and working with literature. But I think now it's at a younger and younger age that they really can sense that children are very awake, I think, to our forces of sympathy and antipathy nowadays in a way that they weren't earlier on. It's a burden for them to be so awake in a way but there it is, and, and we have to show that we're there. And it's an increasingly complex world. It's much more work to even get a passing acquaintance of it, no less to have a real affair with this world in a way. But it seems to be a demand of our time. Well, we have a nine-year-old granddaughter, and, and uh, to have her mingle with any child she meets, she's going to encounter the kid playing with some kind of device right. and you can't just say no don't do that or she'd have nobody to play with or interact with so how do you deal with that <laughs> this is a uh, dilemma that so many Waldorf parents face with their own children living in a neighborhood which is not Waldorfian and unfortunately even in the first grade where half the children are playing video games seeing movies and the other half are trying to be true to the Waldorf principles. And all I could suggest to them is, number one, to invite the neighborhood kids over to show if you put two knitting needles in your hand, instead of using your thumbs to you know, make the game work, look at what you can make. Sometimes that's very, very powerful for the little ones, and knitting is getting to be more, more popular and more chic mm -hmm. again. And the other is when it's in a Waldorf class, they've got to talk to each other. And the teacher has to try to be a just judge and <coughs> help them work out some kind of um, arrangement or compromise. The battle against the media has basically been a losing battle 
since it began. There are definitely those parents who stay with the principals and the children benefit tremendously, but they are fewer and fewer and far between, and they're often not supported <coughs> by the teachers who just turned a blind eye to all the media because then you have to face it, and what do you do? Your school may say, that means you get expelled. There goes half your class. So it's, it's a very difficult issue, and again, we should be talking about it more. We, we really need to be doing this on a national or at least regional basis. These are huge issues, and often they're being ignored, as though they'll go away by and of themselves. Okay, maybe um, Ron Melito, and then we'll end, but I'll... A quick point of clarification. When Rudolf Steiner talked about cinema, they were silent movies. They did not have soundtracks at that time. He spoke it's, about a, a musical movie. That was what, again, this is the... Well, you could have new people would typically have music playing right, and right. play a pianist. Yeah. Right yeah, well, thank you. That's probably what he meant, that there'd be a musical accompaniment. Most people think, and I thought this too until I found this out, you just assume that when you said movie, you yeah. project your experience back, and at that time, it was only in the yeah, third that's a very the good first point. sound came out. I'm not saying what he would have said about that. Right, right. Truthfulness. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, let's stop here. If you, oh, you know, hang around for a little while. If you, uh, anyone wants to just talk a bit more. And we have refreshments and some books and some of your DVDs and other things in the other room. Thank you.